All right, cleaning your liver. I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And drinking large amounts of olive oil does not clean your liver. More on that in a minute. I mean, you can take all the glutathione you want, but your liver's not going to magically clean. It means stopping the things that you're addicted to. You can't rush it. And once again, it takes time. Any big payoff in life requires an investment. It requires persistence, perseverance, and patience. But it can save your life. It can make you younger, give you back your energy, your hormones, your health, and even your good mood. The good news is the liver is self-healing. It can regenerate even if three quarters of it is unrecognizable. It's one of the only body parts of the body that can totally regenerate. Taking the time to clean your liver can make a huge difference in the quality of your life. And it's not complicated. It just takes perseverance. All right. Okay. First, let's address the elephant in the room, the mythical Andreas Morris liver flush that, <laughs> that make people believe all they have to do is drink olive oil. And the next morning, their liver flushes hundreds of stones and presto, their liver is clean. It, <laughs> And people still fall for this stuff after, after, I don't know how many decades, they still fall for this. It's amazing. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Have you ever seen a liver? It's huge. It's the size of a phone book. Any of you remember what a phone book is? And it's the consistency of dense rubbery mud. You can't just hose it clean like a pool filter. Do you really think pouring a glass of olive oil over it is going to clean 30, 40, 50, 60 years of accumulated sludge? Some of that crap is like sticky bubble gum. And drinking large amounts of olive oil does not not clean the liver. Gallstones do not come from the liver anyway. They come from the gallbladder. Those green blobs that people see in their flushes in the toilet, they're not even gallstones. Real gallstones sink. They don't float. The gallbladder does not simply dump into the intestines anyway. It has bile ducts, which stones would have to pass through. And they can only handle at most maybe... 8 to 10 millimeters without rupturing, which is way smaller than the stones that people see in their toilet from one of these flushes, uh, which proves they don't come from the gallbladder. And people who say they passed hundreds or even thousands of stones have no idea of the actual size of a gallbladder, which can only hold maybe about four ounces. People post pictures of massive amounts of these blobs that they pass several times a week, which is physically impossible, not just because the gallbladder cannot hold that many, but gallstones takes years to form. And if, if it was true that large stones were being expelled through the gallbladder, they would probably get stuck and lodge in the bile ducts and the person would end up in emergency surgery. <laughs> People like to say they are not gallstones, but liver stones. Well, liver stones are rare and they're caused by a parasite and they're seen almost exclusively in Asian countries where this parasite thrives, and they are pigment stones, not cholesterol stones, which means they are almost black, not green, like those squishy blobs that people see in their toilet. And even if they were liver stones, the only way they could get out was pass through the gallbladder, which again is physically impossible, like I said before. They cannot pass through the bile ducts. And now this is a great moment for me to thank James Sloan, which worked in the medical field for over 15 years, researching and verifying all of this. So, what are those soft, squishy, non-faceted, floating and melting at room temperature blobs that people see in their toilet? Well, lab analysis has found them to be primarily saponified oils, otherwise known as fecal soaps. You ever heard that word? They are normally produced in the intestine as part of the diet and also part of normal elimination of fats from the blood through the intestines. Highly alkaline substances react with the oil from the flush or these other fat sources, saponifying the oils and fats into soaps that help lubricate the intestines. And the only reason most people don't normally see them is because they're really, really, really small. They're normally very, very small and they can easily be hidden and most people don't see them. The large amount of oil that people use in these flushes, which is way massive amount of oil, creates larger amounts or chunks of these fecal soaps, making them more visible. So now you see them. The remainder of these blobs are a sterile cholesterol complex. The oil these people are ingesting contains compounds known as sterols. That's what olive oil is a lot of. Sterols have a very high affinity for cholesterol, which is why sterols are used by people in the holistic therapy to reduce and lower cholesterol. One of the people that followed James on his post actually decided to take matters in her own hand and decided to experiment to see if these flushes were real. She got them actually checked in a lab 
and confirmed there, there were no real stones in or sludge in her gallbladder. So her gallbladder was clean, okay? Then she followed the directions for this mythical flush and passed the same exact blobs of saponified oil and sterile cholesterol complexes that people claim are stones. So she had a clean gallbladder and then she took the olive oil and then she passed all the same stones that everybody else takes pictures of. So it was formed overnight after drinking the olive oil. It wasn't already in her liver or gallbladder, okay? Even if they were real stones, what I find hilarious is how people think seeing stones make them think that they cleaned their liver. <laughs> Go and get some liver sometime, all right? Go get some liver and pour some olive oil over it and see what happens. Nothing. Do you see all kinds of waste coming out? No. Liver is a dense, thick, compacted, rubbery, muddy substance, and it would take quite a while for anything to percolate through that. This is not a sieve. It is not a pool filter. It's not even a car oil filter. If you use the liver in place of your car's oil filter, your car engine would die because oil cannot flow through a liver like that. So, okay, so. How do you clean a liver? This is what people want to know. From forget about all that, Mark. Just tell me what to do. How do I clean my liver? Well, first and foremost, the most important thing is to first stop doing the things that clog it up. <laughs> Fast food, fried food, preservatives, cooking oil, starches, sugars, smoking, prescription pills, calcium pills, hormone drugs and shots and supplements, cheese, and pretty much any of the modern processed dead fake food that people eat every day. Then stop the chemicals that poison the liver like painkillers, like acetaminophen, antidepressants, tranquilizers, antibiotics, antihistamine, estrogenics from the plastic water bottles, city water with chlorine, fluoride, and heavy metals, and the biggest liver killer of all, da 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 alcohol. Now, I know your biggest question is, just tell me what to take, Marcus. I don't care about any of this. Just tell me what to take to clean my liver, right? Okay, well... Like I said, the liver is self-cleaning. If you give it a chance, if you give it a break and allow it to do it, it will clean itself. And you can't forcefully rush it, which is what people want to do. You can't rush it. It doesn't happen overnight. Start by drinking lots of water. I mean, every day for weeks, all right? Lots of water. Water is the universal solvent, so drink lots of water. Not alkaline water because calcium contributes to stone formation. Now, there are things that help stimulate the liver to clean, like bitter herbs and foods, which trigger the vagus nerves to, to, bleh, to stimulate the liver to start cleaning. Uh, dandelion juice is a great example. When you eat or drink something bitter and you go, yuck, oh, and you spaz out like that, that shiver triggers the liver. And that's why Swedish bitters are very popular herbs for liver cleansing. If you haven't heard about them, look them up. It's, they're, they're, they've been used forever, especially in Europe. Um, and then there are other herbs that help cleanse the liver, like burdock root, a very popular non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal liver purifier. Dandelion root, another liver stimulant that helps increase digestive acid levels, lowers cholesterol, inflammation, cleanses the blood, improves circulation, and it's a pain reliever. Dandelions regulate intestinal flora, the good bacteria in your gut, and it helps the body get rid of waste. And then there's the almighty Chanca Piedra, nicknamed Stonebreaker. This amazing South American rainforest herb is famous is for dissolving and breaking up gallstones and kidney stones. It stimulates production of bile, it helps clear blockages and obstructions caused by mucus and stones and uric acid crystals, as in gout. And then there's nettle leaf, which helps remove lactic acid and uric acid in gout. It also helps lower blood sugar, increases insulin sensitivity due to its chromium content, and protects blood vessels from insulin damage. It's excellent for removing uric acid from the body, and it also blocks the lactic acid cycle, which cancer uses to grow. Then there's artichoke leaf, a great bitter that helps stimulate the liver to produce bile and flush out old toxic bile. Artichoke leaf helps digest fats and get digestion moving and significantly lowers cholesterol and blood pressure. It's good for indigestion, heartburn. It's a liver protector. It's a gentle diuretic. It enhances detoxification reactions as well as protect the liver from damage. Artichoke is great for irritable stomach and irritable bowel. It increases the breakdown of cholesterol and the bile salts. It lowers LDL, the bad cholesterol, and increases HDL, the good cholesterol. And then there's black cumin seed regarded as one of the most powerful anti-carcinogenic herbs there is. It increases natural production of interferon and has phytosterols that help the natural production of hormones, vitamin D and bile acids, aiding in the prevention of endocrine disorders, immune deficiency, and cardiovascular disease. Then there's schizandra berry, a very strong antioxidant and a great liver cleanser that stimulates the liver to clean. There's bupleurum, helps detoxify and treat liver problems like hepatitis, it reduces inflammation, helps 
prevent artery plaque, increases levels of the antioxidant, immune-boosting enzyme superoxide dismutase, and helps the liver create HGH, human growth hormone. Then there's andrographis, a strong anti-inflammatory herb, antiviral, antibacterial, antiparasitical, cancer-destroying, liver-protective, blood-purifying, and immune-enhancing herb. Andrographis is a mitosis inhibitor, which means it stops cells from dividing, as in the case of cancer cells. And then there's also orange peel, a bitter bioflavonoid that helps clean the liver and the kidneys. Now, of course, these are the ingredients in my liver formula. No other formula in the world has all of these. I explained in my last video why I don't have the all-popular milk thistle in my formula. In fact, if you have not seen the last video about why the liver is so important, you really should watch it. If your energy levels aren't what they used to be and your hormones are shot or messed up, you have thyroid issues, female issues, hot flashes, night sweats, fibroids, fibromyalgia, all that stuff. Uh, you have trouble sleeping at night or you have food allergies or skin conditions like eczema or rash or psoriasis, then definitely watch that video. Since one of the functions of the liver is controlling the amount of fat and cholesterol in your blood, if you have too much fat in your blood, your blood gets thicker, which causes your heart to pump harder, which causes high blood pressure, which causes hypertension, which leads to heart attacks or strokes. <laughs> That's not good. Nah, so you want a clean liver. On the plus side, cleaning your liver can make you look 10 years younger, bring back your energy and hormones, clear up your skin, improve your mood, and make you feel all good about life again. If you've been feeling blah and run down and depressed and your life's grinding to a halt, you need to clean your liver. And again, the answer is simply not to take some magic stuff or drink a gallon of olive oil. The biggest effect comes from stopping the unhealthy habits that you've been doing for decades that caused your liver to run down in the first place. With many people, it's a miracle. They're even still alive. Now, start again. Like I said, drink lots of water, all right? Three times a day for weeks and weeks and weeks. Add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to that drink three times a day. Uh, drink fresh squeezed lemon every day for three months and of course rinse your teeth afterwards from both the apple cider vinegar and the, the lemon because those are acids and acids dissolve your teeth. So rinse your mouth after that. But they also help dissolve what's in your liver. So it's important you, you, you should do that. My liver formula helps, MarcusLiverFormula.com or MarcusProducts.com, and it's also on Amazon USA. Just do an Amazon search for Wild Forest Free Liver, and I highly suggest you download and read the liver ebook. It lists all kinds of other things you can do and take and use to help clean the liver and maintain the liver, and it talks about lots of other things that help, like pine pollen, watermelon, NAC, glutathione, D-limonene, alpha-lipoic acid, and phosphatidylcholine. But remember, you can take all the glutathione you want, but it's not going to clean your liver if you keep doing the bad things. Herbal formulas are much more effective anyway than taking an isolate like glutathione because they affect the liver so many more ways than just one pathway reaction. Read the ebook. You need to take this seriously. You know, if you have low sex drive, low energy, and your skin conditions, and those are just outer symptoms. And trying to treat those outer symptoms does not get to the root cause. You can take all the testosterone shots and female hormone replacement therapy sessions you want, but that's simply painting a coat of paint over rust. Why is the car rusting? You need to get to the root cause or else you will eventually fall apart, literally. I'm not very popular because I say the things people don't want to hear, but if you want to see real improvement in your life, then you have to roll up your sleeves and deal with the ugly mess inside you and do some deep cleaning and heavy scrubbing on your hands and knees. You know, do intermittent fasting, take the herbal vitamin C, not that synthetic crap that's made in a lab that causes kidney gall stones and gallstones. If you don't have a gallbladder anymore, then you really need to watch what you eat. Take lecithin uh, because it's, it emulsifies fats and aloe vera because it helps soothe your intestinal tract. Uh, the ebook also says what to do if you have jaundice, hepatitis, cirrhosis, or hormone issues. It's, it, it's up to you. You need to really find the strength to stop the bad things that you're addicted to and be the person you deserve to be. I want to see you full of life and energy and happiness. Do it now. I want to hear your success stories in a few months, okay? Like, please, do it. I, wanted, I want you to be happy and free. All right. I'm done lecturing. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Tell me what to take. So what do I take? I want it now. There's gotta be something.